Since entering the league over a decade ago, Victor Eric Olaf Hedman Hi everyone, I'm Olaf and I like warm hugs has developed into the driving force on the back end for Tampa Bay. And while he may seem reserved and rather shy off ice, you'll probably find that the 2018 Norris recipient is a rather interesting catch. In this video, I'm going to go over five facts that you didn't probably know about number 77. And with that, here are five facts that you didn't know about Victor Hedman. While it's pretty typical for most goalies to begin their hockey careers as skaters growing up, on the flip side, it's rather rare to see goalies turn skaters. Hedman, who grew up in the same small Swedish town as the Sedins and Peter Forsberg in Ovik, was the youngest of three with two older brothers, Oscar and Johan. Hedman describes himself as an awkward kid growing up as he was usually towering over his peers, which may be why initially that Hedman didn't begin on the blue line but rather between the pipes. But his father, Oli, recalls Victor wasn't always the smoothest skater, at least at the start. He skated like a moose, he says. He had to develop the muscles for skating. And according to an article from Sports Illustrated, it was his parents that convinced him to vacate the crease, or should I say bribed? Well, sort of. As the story goes, Victor found a way to negotiate with his mother, Elizabeth. The deal Hedman concocted was that he would trade in his pads if there would be a new helmet under the tree. And obviously, come Christmas time, there was. But after granting his parents' wishes, Victor claims the adjustment wasn't easy at first. I don't think I was that skilled when I was younger, he says. I had some trouble growing into my body. My coordination wasn't the best. I had some tougher years, he says. Regardless, as we all know, the defenseman definitely overcame the initial growing pains as he's blossomed into one of the best on the blue line currently in the game. Moving to a town that's primarily known for producing paper and NHL talent, Oli, years before Victor was even thought of, moved to the town of Ovik, which is roughly five hours from Stockholm, in 1969. And since, according to him, hockey wasn't in the cards, as he recalls, I wasn't any good. Therefore, at the start, Oli took a job pretty much where all non-hockey players do, the Moto Paper Mill. But not long after he became a father, Oli found himself juggling his shifts at the paper mill for time as a moto hockey equipment manager, which in turn helped him remain on the inside as his sons went through the hockey ranks. Victor recalls the intense sacrifices his father once made throughout his 23 years spent with the team. He was never with the senior team, but the under 20 and under 18s. I got two older brothers, so he was with the team and with me, hard hours. He's got his normal job, and then he had that. Not a lot of time at home. It's a tough job. A lot of respect for those guys, and obviously for my dad too. You know firsthand, he says. As I mentioned before, Victor grew up as part of a family that lives and breathes hockey, even still today. Therefore, it's no surprise that his older brothers also excelled at the sport themselves, as both Johan and Oscar have found different but still effective ways of making a living while immersed in hockey. Johan, who never played for Moto at the senior level, spent several seasons playing Division I and II hockey before hanging up the skates and retiring after the 2013-14 season. Regardless, the eldest headman hasn't left the hockey industry, as he, since retirement, has spent time coaching various teams in southern Sweden. Oscar, who is also a defenseman, has been suiting up for Moto now for over a decade. But before he would graduate to the senior level, Oscar, interestingly, played with one of his younger brother's former NHL teammates, Anton Strahlman. As Strahlman was part of Team Sweden during 2005 and 2006 in the World Juniors, and even played on the same line as Victor's older brother. Anton recalls, while he was still with Tampa, his experiences while playing with both brothers. Back then, Oscar was really strong defensively, Strawman remembers. He was a big guy, then too, super solid. And I at the time was way more offensively minded than maybe I am now. I think it was a good pairing, very similar to how me and Hetty are with him, being more offensively minded and me more defensively. It was a little more the opposite with me and Oscar, he says. When he's not on ice, one of number 77's favorite recreational pastimes is flying. Taking after his grandfather, who was once a military pilot, Hedman has big ambitions as far as taking to the sky is concerned, as the defenseman has previously stated that he intends to obtain his pilot's license once he retires. But 
License or not, that still hasn't stopped Hedman from hanging out in the stratosphere, as he's logged eight hours with a flight instructor, of course, while flying in a Piper PA-32. And while I have no idea what that is, maybe you do. It's a big rush, Hedman says. You're so concentrated, but at the same time, when you feel the wheels go down and kind of slow down, it's an unbelievable feeling for the first time. While it's pretty typical for NHL players growing up to have a role model or someone they looked up to, it's not extremely common to have a player to follow from your hometown, at least for most anyways. But for Victor Hedman, who has seemingly hailed from a town that knows the hockey secret, he obviously had several choices. The Sedins, Marcus Naslund, and Peter Forsberg were among them. And as Hedman recalls, his number one idol was two-time Stanley Cup champ, Peter Forsberg. Hedman recalls getting to celebrate in close proximity with Forsberg as he brought the cup back to Sweden. You know, being from the same town, he was always my biggest idol, Hedman says. And when he brought it back to our hometown, to see it close up and personal, not touching it, it was pretty cool. 